Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Lady Diana's Cat Emporium Live on a Monday evening. Um, we're a little bit different today. We're very stationary because today we discovered that YouTube had updated their terms of service and you needed to have 1,000 followers or subscribers on YouTube in order to do live streaming on a mobile device. Um, and thank you to everybody. It was like such an amazing morning to have put that out on Twitter to say, sorry, we can't do a live stream only to have everybody um, get on board and, and follow us and subscribe to us so that we could do it, uh, which was incredibly special and it makes us feel very loved indeed. Um, but the downside is that YouTube doesn't believe it. I think they maybe have to do checks or make it wait for like 24 hours or something in case it's spam bots or whatever. So um, unfortunately we still can't do the mobile thing that we usually do. So we're very much like in one place today and I can't move around too much because we're on a laptop. Um, but that should be okay because what we've got is we've set up a nice big uh, space behind me full of all of our cat robots which we use in the cafe and today we wanted to talk about automated toys. Um, so once again, are you right there? Okay, no, he's good. He's not trapped in a box. Um, once again, I want to say a really big thank you to everybody who's hopped on and subscribed to us today. It really means a lot. It, and it was just such a touching thing to have such a, a fast and enormous response. And we really didn't expect it and incredibly grateful. So thank you so much. Um, well, without any further ado, we can talk about some automated toys. Um, unfortunately, as is always the case, I've had about a million and one helpers until the camera turned on, and now they've all disappeared. Now, Peter is here, um, but he's very upset because he just had his claws clipped, so I don't think he's going to cooperate with me very much. Obi is here, but he is a live wire, and he's a little bit unpredictable, so I don't know what's gonna happen there. Um, but maybe once some of our toys are up and running, um, we'll have a couple more cats joining us and coming our way. So, while well, Obi's here, and he's already trying to play with the toy. I'm gonna take a little scoot back because um, the field of view is a little tricky um, and I need to uh, make sure you can actually see the toy. Um, I hope you all can hear me okay. I'm using a new microphone, which is, um, we haven't used it through the laptop this before, so this is the first time. And as with all things first time, you just never know how it's going to go. So I hope you can hear me okay. Um, that's Josh in the background. He's gonna start giving the cats dinner as well. So we might have some of them join us for dinner. Um, so the first uh, automated cat toy that I'm going to have a look at is this one, which is the Pounce. Um, and I think this this range of automated cat toys is very popular. So you, you see it quite a lot on things like Zoo Plus or um, pretty much everywhere, Pets at Home, a lot of places stock these. Um, and there's a series of them. So the same company also produces um, darts. This is one that has a laser in it. And we also have Flick. Uh, which has sort of like quite a leathery tail which flits around. Um, next to me on my left, we've got the Cocoba. Uh, it's kind of like a plastic mat and it has a spinning device underneath it so when it turns on it will rotate around. You can add different attachments to this as well. Um, it's quite a lot like the Cat's Meow which we had a few years ago and we still have, um, but it does have a distinct advantage that you can use uh, AA batteries instead of C batteries which we don't tend to buy very often. So we'll have a look at that one as well. Um, we have a version of the Cat's Meow but we don't have batteries for it, but that one's there, um, which Teddy is helpfully modeling for me. And we have another one from Cocoba over here which has a rotating feather inside. That um, has the cardboard top with holes cut in it as well. We have a hamster in a bowl. We have a beer glass and our little robot fish, which I'll drop in there later. And we got a series of bugs, um, which we play with the cats in a certain way. And we also have our butterfly toy as well, um, which we used to sell here, um, but we don't longer stock. So we thought we'd go through some of them and talk about the advantages of some, disadvantages of some. Um, I am trying to keep an eye on chat. Oh, I can see Sabine has said something, but as you can see, I'm quite far away from the camera. Um, so I'll have a little look. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to uh, give you a down the top shot there. Sorry guys, uh, the sound is great. Excellent, thank you. Thanks so much for confirming that. Um, so yeah. With no further ado, while the cats are all snacking, and I hope that the sound isn't so great that you can hear them all chomping noisily. They're like the loudest eaters in the world. Um, I'm gonna start off with the pounce. So with the pounce, we'd say that this is a good kitten toy. Even though you can vary the speed, so you've got three speed settings. So this is a slow one, um, which hopefully you can see, it's not too blown out with the lights. Um, you've got slightly faster, 
so on. Um, and you also have one that sort of randomizes, so it stops and it goes and it kind of moves a little bit more erratically. Um, ours is running a little slow because we've had it for a long time and it does seem to be wearing out. But we kind of find that this is a good toy for cats who maybe aren't that smart. So that's why it's probably a good kitten toy. Um, they are less concerned, I think, with um, prey-like behaviors. So they're kind of okay with the repetitive action. They'll still get involved in it. They're kind of into just like things that are moving. So for kittens, this one's really good. But we find as the cats get older, smarter, a little bit more wily, they really want something that moves um, unexpectedly. And they also want something that moves quickly and in sudden bursts. So I'd say this one is good for a young cat, but maybe not so much for an older cat. So I will put that one down. Um, we also have the dart. I think I have probably the same feedback about this as with the pounce. Um, we find personally in the cafe that the cats figure it out pretty quickly. They become inured to toys really quickly. I mean, especially here, we do play with them quite a lot. So they get playtime all throughout the day, whether it's from us or guests or through some automated toys. And once they figure out how something works, little Pete cameo, hey buddy, um, they do tend to sort of lose interest pretty quickly. And we find that's the case with the dart. However, I don't think that's necessarily a flaw of the product because we find they also have the same response to um, laser toys. So it's very possible that if your cat likes laser toys and doesn't quite, hasn't quite figured out that it's actually just you with the laser, they may take to this a little bit more than ours do. Um, the other thing that I think is a slight shortcoming of pretty much every automated toy, um, but particularly one that directs the attention elsewhere, but the noise of the toy is centered here, is that the cats sort of will pay attention to what they can hear. Obviously their hearing is much more acute than ours, so they're gonna be looking at the toy sometimes instead of the dot. Um, so this one's not so much for us when the cats are older, once again, Pretty good for kittens, especially when they're at that really mad stage and they'll just chase anything. It does randomize the pattern at which the, the lasers move. Um, I think it would be great to be able to demo it, but I don't think the light's really gonna show up for you guys anyway, but it does send like your usual red laser dot spinning crazily around the house. Um, it has full 360 degree rotation. Um, so yeah, it's quite a good toy and it also has some lateral movement on the, um, the laser as well. So it's not just like, concentric circles or anything. It does move it around um, with quite a range of movement, but probably best for a younger cat. And we would also say, as with almost every toy, do expect your cat to get inured to it over time. So it may be worth putting it away for a while before bringing it back out again. And with every toy, just don't overdo it too much. Otherwise they'll get bored of it really quickly and you'll find it harder to engage it with them, engage them with it later. Um, so that's something that we, we do, especially with automated toys. Um, so we did a poll on Facebook earlier this week and I'm not sure if uh, many of you guys who are listening tonight participated in that, but the feedback was really interesting because we did find that the vast majority of people find that their cats just don't get involved with automated toys. Um, and we were quite interested in this because obviously we, we like trying gadgets and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, and I think we had something like 602 respondents who said no to automated toys and something like 150 who were on board. Um, so that did show that there was quite a large number of people who haven't had much success with them. So that's kind of what prompted us to share the toys that we use. I and mean, he's playing with it, it's not even on. I might turn it on for him. Um, <laughs> now he's surprised. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd talk about it and share it and, and maybe give some tips on how to get the most out of your automated toys because some of the automated toys that we use of themselves are not interesting enough, but when we pair them with other stimulus, they're much more interesting to the cat. So we'll go through some of that as well. I can see a quick question. I'm just gonna lean forward. My cat has not taken to automated toys either. I'm wondering if we haven't found the right one. It's possible. And I think, um, I mean, one of the things that's great about automated toys is if you're going to not be at home, sometimes it would be reassuring to know that there's something that could kind of entertain your cat when you're not there. Or if you've come home from a really busy day at work and you're tired, you just don't have the energy to play with your cat, but you know they need it. I think that's where automated toys really come in. So if it's possible to find the right one, I can see that being really helpful for people but obviously, you know, they're expensive, they take up space. You don't want to spend like 50 quid on something and then your cat's just not into it like five minutes later. So um, hence this live stream, hopefully it's helpful. Um, and yeah, we're happy to share our recommendations, especially in terms of what's appropriate for what life cycle. Um, so yeah, we've got these two. 
suitable for kittens. Um, we also have this one called the Flick. I think this one seems to last a bit longer in terms of holding cats' interest. Um, I think some of the older cats here tend to keep being interested in this one. I think it's because, um, so hopefully the demo is okay from my hand, but as you can see, it's got like a little tail that whips in and out. It's very quick. It happens unexpectedly. And I also think it's the fact that the tail is made of like sort of a, a leathery kind of cord, which um, is a lot like a mouse's tail. And I think that's like Peter's interested already. Um, so I think this one has the potential to really hold cat's interest a lot better than some of the other ones. Um, one caveat I would say is because it does flick quite fast. This one has developed a knot on the end, obviously to stop it fraying. But if a cat is too close, that could hit them in the face. It's like a little thing to be aware of, but cats are smart enough to not do that twice. So um, just something that could happen, but not really a big deal if it does. I'm gonna let Peter play with this because he's very, very interested. You can see him following it. Um, so you can have that mate. Um, and now that he's lost interest in this one, I might pick it up. Um, so this is kind of the Kokoba. Um, Sorry, Kokoba is the brand of this one, um, and it's kind of like the cat's meow. I don't really know what you'd call it. It's like a mat um, with a rotating spinner underneath. I demonstrated it a bit earlier. Um, this one the cats really like. So um, while we were getting ready and we were sitting here preparing everything, Wendy actually came over and she turned it on herself so she could play with it and roll around on it and then bite something else. Um, but yeah, this one's a really good one. They do still play with it quite a lot. Um, it has a random setting, it has a slow setting, it has a fast setting. It's a pretty basic toy, but I think the fact that the fabric makes a noise, which is satisfying, the cats really enjoy like a rustling sound um, when they're hunting, um, but also it's partially hidden. And I think a big part of what makes toys interesting for cats is this element of, of sneaking up on something. So the flick that Peter is playing with right now, the, the, the tail comes in and it hides away and it comes back out again. And I think that that sort of that hiding and coming back is something that's really interesting to them because that is sort of a natural prey behavior and something that kind of really grabs their attention and keeps it. This one has the same feature. Um, I would say it does have like a louder motor than the flick. So it's a bit more predictable. And I think that predictability is one thing that can kind of create that toy boredom where they get a little bit less into it. Oh, I've got this, I'm surrounded by cats. I'm, usually this is the dream of a live stream is to have all of the cats around me. Who knew all I'd have to do is get out every single toy that they like. Um, so this is great. I'm very happy to have them involved. I think we're about to get sabotaged. <laughs> hey, Sybil, what are you doing? Um, so yeah, we are in a laptop. We normally don't do this for exactly the reason that might happen now. I can see Sybil is watching me. There we go. I knew it would happen. Sibs, do you want to come over? Get off the laptop, please. <laughs> come on, girl. Off you go. Scoot, scoot, scoot. There we go. Okay, good girl. That may happen again. Oh, sorry. So, there's so much going on, guys. All the excitement. Now, we have another one. I think this was from Hamley's that we bought this, which is a hamster in a wheel. Um, I would say... Maybe not a high priority toy in the list of cat things. Um, this one's a bit conked out as well. A lot of our toys really go through it, but it's a hamster. It runs in a wheel. It runs around your house. Um, problem is it's quite chunky. I mean, they won't. <laughs> and also the bowl falls open, which you can't quite see where you are. Um, but that's pretty much what, exactly what happened. Um, the cats are interested, but their interest is quite moderate. I don't think it's ever going to really get their blood up or get them chasing it in a big way. <laughs> Peter is enjoying his crystal ball full of hamster. Um, it's okay. I think, um, I mean, a lot of automated toys, I'm probably going to repeat myself over and over again. They're a little bit more for kittens. Um, so I'm going to let this hamster wheel go and see how they get on with that. Um, one of the advantages of the hamster wheel is that it is very random and it does move in unexpected ways, which I think the cat's quite like. Um, he is running a mark, so I'm going to turn him off. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's that's probably not. I think it's it's not designed for cats. It's designed as a novelty item. We tried it out, probably a no from us. Um, I'm going to turn off the flick because we'll move on to new toys. This one is uh, such a favorite of Cassandra's. She was trying to play with it earlier before we had turned it on. Um, so this is basically just a wooden box, has a series of holes at the top, and there's a rotator inside that has just a little feather. And it's pretty simple, but once again, it has that key feature of um, slightly hidden movement, which I think the cats really enjoy. Um, so I'm going to turn this one on 
maybe Cassandra will show up. They have a habit sometimes of showing up when their favorite things arrive. Who's, who's here? Obi, do you want to come play? Sometimes it's tricky to get them to actually do stuff on camera because they know that's where I want them to be. <laughs> so we'll see if they do. And while we're doing this, I'm going to get one of Wendy's favorite toys. Um, so Wendy loves, this always reminds me, does, does anyone remember um, Red Dwarf? And he had that robot fish called McCartney. This always makes you think of Red Dwarf. We have this little robot fish. So he just runs on, um, on watch batteries, LR44. And they have little sensors on the side of them. I think this also might be a toy from Hamley's that we bought. Um, and as soon as it's wet, it will start moving. So this is why I have a beer glass, um, which Pete decided he wanted to put his backside on. Um, but yeah, once you drop this guy in, as soon as he realizes he's in water, he'll start having a little swim around the place. Um, there he is, he's getting involved. And I think Sybil is quite interested in this one. Um, so this is a real big favorite of Wendy's. When we get it out in summertime, we, we bring out a lot more sort of water bowls and things for them to play with in summer. Um, Wendy will sit by her fish and her fish bowl and wait patiently for somebody to plonk it in the water for her. Um, this is not high energy play. I would say this is much more for just like sort of mental stimulation, but I think it is one of the, the most fun ones that we have. Like the cats can sit there and watch it for hours. We put it in a much bigger container obviously than this one. Um, but yeah, they, they really, really love the robot fish and I think it's quite good. It moves erratically, it moves like a fish. Um, and you can see that quite a few of them are interested in it while it's in the glass. So this is definitely a winner. Um, and especially when it's hot and if your cat likes to play with water, we think these are really cool. Um, so. You guys are having fun. I'm, I'm not going to put that one away. You can enjoy it. I'm just going to leave it there. I can see some questions. So I'm going to take a little break from talking about toys and have a little look. I'm going to scoot forward and see if I can answer anything. Um, can I recommend something for older cats? 15 years. We haven't had any older cats in the cafe in that age range. Um, but I would wonder if maybe some of the kitten ones might be okay because when you consider that they'd have limited mobility um they probably don't want to be random like wildly chasing something around the cafe so i would say maybe for an older cat i would be looking at these ones with the mats um and slow moving or fast moving um sort of whips and things underneath because that way they don't have to be doing a big range of movement to engage with the toy um and also it's it's you know maybe slow moving enough to give them the satisfaction of catching it and that's one of the things we find when we play face to face with the cats is that they have to sometimes catch it, otherwise they're not having any fun. So you need to give them that moment of success and then they'll keep playing. Um, so yeah, I think maybe I'd go this direction or the flick um, because it's not moving too far away and it's not demanding too much of their bodies. Um, Julia has asked that you found the same with the flick versus the pounce, cat stayed engaged with it more. Yeah, I, I think it's got a lot to do with the hiding thing. Oh, guys, if you're gonna fight, well, Peter. You sassy diva. All right, I'm just gonna move this toy over this side. Two toys together is probably not a good idea. Maybe I'll take the fish out. Um, are you right? Drama, okay, who's next? Um, my cat is watching this live stream where our children watch kids play with, shoes, uh, with toys on YouTube. Excellent, that's what we like to hear. Um, I can't believe that actually somebody told me recently about like kids opening toys on YouTube. I didn't know that was a thing, but it's massive. And they have like millionaire children opening toys on YouTube. Amazing. Um, Red Dwarf reference. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to eat your little fishy. Has Tink calmed down since last week? Is she being nicer to Cecil? I don't think so. Um, Laura's off camera, but I, she can verify because she's on the floor with them more. Yeah, I haven't seen her misbehaving quite as much lately. Um, so yeah, they, they, they do seem to be settling down a little bit. I think I, I am usually the first one who gets a little bit like freaked out if the cats aren't always getting on the way that I'd want them to. Um, the cat carers encouraged me to be patient and they were right. It just, sometimes things need a bit of time um, and I think they need a bit of time. They had so much change with Donnie and Wookie going and Carbonell going and all the new guys coming in. So yeah, I think they're doing, a, I feel like they're doing a lot better. I mean, we obviously saw a little tiff here, but that's also a bit just Peter. He's kind of like that. Um, so yeah, Teddy has decided to stick his paw in the toy and stop it from working, so that's great. Also a problem with automated toys, but that does raise an interesting point, which is um, that 
there isn't very much legislation that governs how pet toys are made um, in terms of materials and suitability, choking hazards, all that sort of stuff. So the things that you might expect to see when you're buying toys for your children, um, like fire ratings and all that sort of stuff, they don't really kind of have the same level of governance over things for your cats. So when you're buying something for your cat at home, do keep uh, in mind that it's really going to be up to you to decide what's safe for your pet, um, because sometimes the government doesn't take care of that for you. So just something to bear in mind when you're buying toys, especially automated ones that have the potential to cause injury. Keep an eye out. Excuse me. <laughs> so Simple has just run off. Did, did you? I, I really hope that was caught on camera because I did. I was oblivious, just chatting away to the camera. Uh, Sybil's picked up my little robot fish and run away with it. So she, oh God, okay. I'm just going to go get that really quickly. Is Laura, oh, Laura's going to help out. Problem is I'm sitting on my knees. So my ability to get up and run, I'll, I'll, I'll just get up and then just fall over off camera. Um, <laughs> so I might hold on to this one. She was just running around with it in her mouth like this. This is mine. Um, you're a clever girl, Sybil. Do you want me to put it in the water for you? Wendy's here. It's her favorite. Um, all right, I'm going to move out of the way and let this be in frame a bit more for you, so you can so you can enjoy the view of Wendy's bum that it will then give you. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Um, so yeah, she does love sitting in noisy plastic bags. Yeah, we do find crinkle bags, I mean, are amazing. And this is a perfect segue, Susan, to talk about all the other things that we put with these robot toys, because sometimes the toy itself is not quite interesting enough, but when you pair it up with something else, it becomes a little bit better. Um, this toy, I'll put it over here for now. So we have a lot of bugs, loads of loads of little bugs. So we've got ladybugs, purple bug, green bugs, all kinds of bugs. We have about 20 of these. Um, they run on watch batteries as well. You can get them at all kinds of places. Um, so uh, Flying Tiger, which was previously Tiger. Um, you can get them on like Amazon, Zoo Plus, all kinds of places online. They're, they're like a fairly common place toy you can get in different places. They just have a switch on the bottom and they vibrate. And then I don't know how this is gonna work. No, my skin's not slippery enough, but they walk around the floor. Um, I need a surface. Ah, here we go, actually. I have a box lid. So they'll just move around um, sort of in their own way. <laughs> I have to be careful because they're all looking at it. If they leap on this, I'm not going to be able to hold it up. Um, so the cats quite like these. And as they run around, like they, they do run erratically, they run in different directions and they quite like that. But what they like even more than that is if they are running either inside something so in a tub, which makes quite a bit of noise. Cassandra's interested. So Sybil having a little watch of it. Um, so they like it when they're in the tub. They also like it if we put some paper over it. Um, so paper creates a little rustling sound like a mouse running through a wood pile or something. So they also enjoy that kind of thing as well. Um, so we find if we were to just put a bug on the floor, maybe they'd be into it. But if we put it under some paper, we put it in a tub, they're much more interested. Another thing that I think is a good property of these toys, well, aside from the fact that you can get them everywhere and they're quite cheap, um, is that they're quiet. And I think one of the problems with stealth play and automated toys is their hearing is so good, they can hear it wherever it is. Whereas these are very small, they're fairly quiet, so it gives them kind of that satisfying experience of sort of having to listen and see where it is and pounce on it, um, which is further augmented if it's underneath something like paper or bubble wrap or bits of plastic. So bugs, pretty good. We really like them. Um, also, we can put some links to some of these toys in our um, YouTube description. If you oh, you guys, come on now. I have created a small problem because they don't like sharing. And Cassandra can be a bit dramatic too. So I'll get two bugs playing. And then she can have one, and Cecil can have one. Let's see. Do you want one? Okay, she's fine. Um, where does this leave us now? We've got... In fact, this is Cassandra's favorite toy. Maybe she'll... Nope, she's gone. Okay. Cat's gonna cat. Um, what else do we have? We've got the butterfly. This one's quite a big favorite. Um, it just flies, but it moves in a really um, 
I generally like with every cat play, it's always about what looks more naturally like a bug or a bird or a mouse or whatever bird of, animal of prey that they're interested in. And this one's quite popular. So the guys really like this one. Um, it's erratic, it moves very quickly. Um, it's quite satisfying. We do find they get inured to this one, but we take it away, bring it back. They're still on board. And this is fine for, this works for adult cats as well as kittens. We find that this is quite a good one all through the life cycle. One downside I'd say is that the um, butterfly doesn't last very long and you often will need to keep reaffixing it. Um, so that does happen quite a bit, but it, I mean, it's just a sign that they're really enjoying it. So that's pretty good. So um, yeah, turn that off. Actually, I actually might leave it on. I mean, they're <laughs> having a great time. Um, yes, please see the links. Yep, no worries. I will do that at the end. Um, we've got a couple of other bits and pieces, which I will run through. Um, we're at what, 7.26, so we're almost sort of at the end of our live stream. I was thinking it would be like 20, 25 minutes. Uh, we got one of these. It comes with an attachment, um, and it's sort of got this like gyro thing where it always stays upright no matter what. However, we found it kept falling apart. And also, whenever we've had any kind of like rolling automated um, kind of gyroscopic toy, we just find the cats don't get on board with it. It's not enough that it moves, it has to move like something they'd want to hunt. So this one, I mean, we, we like plenty of other Cocoba products, but this one is not really for us. So, uh, yeah, no, on this one. Um, this is a broken one, but it was a, a ball that moved, not unlike the gyroscopic one, but it came within a crinkly plastic play mat. And that made all the difference between it being interesting and not interesting. So that one was quite a good one, um, but I don't have a working model to demonstrate as Salome liked the crinkly thing so much that she kept sitting on it and then she broke it. And so we have to buy a new one. Always the way. Um, Obi has just decided to take over my tub full of goodies. So we're uh, gonna work around him and get some of our other ones. We've got, so we've got a couple, two other things, the very last two, I think then I've, gone through our full range of automated toys um, that we have here today. I have one other to mention at the end. Um, we got this big old bug, which I think we bought from Tiger as well. No, it's no good. They don't like it. If they're gonna chase a bug, they're gonna chase a very little bug. Um, we have done things with like um, remote control cars and like bigger motorized items, but they haven't been very successful. I think the noise is a bit too much. Um, and also the movement is, uh, doesn't have a good sort of a rapid change of direction thing with it. So I think remote control cars, you don't really have that kind of dexterity that they'd like to see. Um, we also of course have laser pointers. Um, we just found our cats understand them very, very quickly. So they look at our hand, they look at the pointer. And unless they're already in that really heightened state of like already really wanting to chase, we don't find they get quite as engaged. Um, but they do sometimes. I'd say laser pointers, it's really down to individual cats. Thankfully, they're not very expensive. So if you do get one and your cat doesn't like it, it's not really a big deal. Um, but yeah, they're kind of, I feel like they're kind of a staple that like you have them. Some cats are into it, other cats not so much. So we also have that. Um, and the very last automated toy that I was going to mention was um, our pet cube. So we have a pet cube bites, which was gifted to us um, by the guys at pet cube a couple of years ago. Oh, I hate Tink. Tink's playing with the butterfly. Um, and so we don't have the play version. The play version has the laser, but as we had had the dart, this laser toy, um, for quite some time at that point. Thank you, Cecil. He's, he's gonna keep going, I think. So you gonna move? You look like you are. Come on, mate. Scoot, scoot. There we go. Um, the, yes, because we'd had the dart for some time, we knew that the cats, we're kind of hit and miss on playing with laser toys um, that had automated routines. So we, we didn't go for that one, we went for the Bites one, which distributes treats. Um, the reason we don't have it here right now is I actually took it home and I used it with Obi. And it had a very, very um, beneficial impact there because he was a smaller kitten. He was sort of like four months old. He needed to eat more frequently and in smaller amounts. And I wasn't home to give him that because I was here at work. So I would log into my Pet Cube Bites and rather than give him treats, I would just distribute his food in small quantities throughout the day. Um, and it helpfully does a chime. So you can kind of get like this Pavlovian response where it chimes and then the cat knows that you're about to give him something to eat. So we found that super helpful, even though I'm not sure that's the direct intended use. Um, and he never responded to us like talking to him or um, like you can speak to your cat through the pet cube. He didn't really care about that. He just wanted the food. Um, but it was really, really helpful. And it was also really reassuring because it got, meant I could check on him and make sure he was okay throughout the day. So. 
those are quite cool and I do like the pet cube. Um, I just don't have it here to demo because I stole it. Um, but I will be bringing it back. Um, I don't think Donnie is going to need it at my house anymore. So yeah, this is our um, robot toy rundown. Our summary so far is they have a time and a place, but nothing really replaces the bond between you and your cat. More often than not, um, you know, it, it'll amuse them for a while and it does kind of give them some mental stimulation, but what they really want is playtime with you. The one-on-one the -on -one bond is super, super important and nothing can really replace that, but this can supplement that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a couple of good things that we recommend and are definitely worth trying. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we can also do, if you guys are interested, um, and do let us know in the comments uh, or in the live feed chat, if you're interested in us putting together something like a bit more comprehensive, written down, um, we'd be happy to do that as well. We generally just start the live streams and talk and hope for the best. Um, so yeah, we, we're more than happy to do something a bit more concrete that you can refer back to. Um, and we're also gonna be looking at a few new toys coming up. So next week, we're expecting to receive a Ripple rug, which was recommended to us by Moo's mum, Laura, who I, I caught up with on the weekend. And she showed me this video of Moo playing with a new Ripple rug that she had got, um, which is an interesting play rug that you can form into shapes. So, and looking at it, it looks brilliant. So we've ordered one that's gonna come from America. So hopefully next week, we'll have that in time for our live stream to do like an unboxing and share what that product is like. Um, and I'm trying to get my hands on something called a mouser, um, which is a, it's like a robot toy. It's a mouse that runs all around your house, but it has something like $1 million worth of investment in the AI to simulate prey behavior. And it, it like struggles when you catch it and it tries to get away and does all sorts of stuff. So that is apparently the, uh, the mecca of huntable mechanized toys and I'd like to try that and see if our guys like it as well because we are always always interested in different forms of indoor enrichment for our cats um, so if we get that we will also be unboxing that um, but last I saw they don't sell outside the US so uh, hopefully if anybody from Petronics is watching and would like to hook us up we will buy one just let us know um, anyone else got some questions Yep, Instagram or Twitter post to refer back to. Yes, we can do that. Um, we'll. I think we might have to do a blog post and then link it out on socials because there's so much content. We probably can't fit it in one post, but we will. And uh, yeah, we'll make sure that you can find everything that we've got. And um, we've got, my cat loves those butterflies, but he wrecks them quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So do ours. They don't last long. Um, we usually have to buy like a couple of replacements. The, the base of the toy definitely outlasts the actual like attachment of the toy. Um, we've got a question, how is Donny? He is great. He has been exploring the backyard. He's not the bravest cat in the world, so he doesn't go too far, but he does have a habit of getting himself stuck. So he gets himself stuck in the neighbor's yard and then he cries and we have to go and get him. And then he gets himself stuck on the roof and he cries and we have to go and get him. So he's not quite got the agility of a normal outdoor cat and he doesn't go too far. So don't worry. He's, he's very safe and he's very, um, He's brave, but not too brave. So he's doing really well and he's really enjoying having a home life that's nice and peaceful. So um, yeah, he's great. And it is so lovely having him in the house. He's a real cutie. Um, who else? Ripple rugs are amazing. Oh, so somebody's got one already. Excellent, cool. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get ours and we can share it as well. Um, but yeah, it looked as though the cats in, in all of the videos and footage and on Instagram are loving it. And I can understand exactly why it would be great. Just even looking at the product, I knew straight away that I could see these guys using it. We have play mats all throughout the cafe as well, but having something that has sort of like a bit of uh, structural integrity, I can totally get why that product is gonna be great. So fingers crossed the cats like it. Um, and yeah, suggest other streams on like a good good combs and brushes. Yes, uh, Susan, we, we actually do wanna do all of that because we use like every cat product that exists, we have tried. And some products that are not for cats, we try as well. Um, so yeah, we will definitely be able to do something about combs and brushes and I'll come back to that. Um, oof, this, they've decided to have a little rumble right near the light, so that's nice and safe. Um, on that note, I'm going to sign off. Um, if there are any comments that follow the live stream, I'll answer them in the comments. Thank you again so much for joining us and don't forget to like, subscribe, and also keep an eye out because in the coming weeks, we're going to be releasing our first very formal video series on how to introduce cats into a multi-cat environment, something we've done quite a number of times. And we wanna share how we do that with everybody else because that's a question we get asked all the time in the cafe. How do you get them to get on? The answer is 90% of the time we do a lot of things and 1% of the time they are just cats. 
and they don't always. But yeah, we do our best. Anyway, have a lovely evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully next week we will be mobile again and moving around and back to our usual format. And yeah, see you in a week. Bye.